everyone, Port ISM. Welcome to, well, this was going to be my top 10 kits, but I built way too many over the years with it just be 10. I could have made this top 50 kits probably quite easily. Um, so I narrowed it down to 20, but it's 21 really, kind of cheated. Um, yeah, so this is the, not necessarily the best kits, but these are the kits that I've had some of the best fun building over the year. Now, don't get me wrong, most of them are some of the best kits I've built, but there's one or two in there that I wouldn't necessarily say were great, but I had great fun building them along the way. So we've got a variation of cars, bikes, aircraft, armor, and sci-fi. I've tried to cover a lot of bases. It is going to be heavily car-based, because that's generally what I've built most of over the years. I've built hundreds and hundreds of models over the years. Um, I've been doing this um, sem seriously, semi-seriously since about 2010. Uh, I'm going to say professionally since 2014 when I started making videos, 2013, um, because technically it is a profession. Um, so there's a lot more I could have added to this. Um, so it's a narrow... Narrow the list down was quite hard to do because we got a 40 minute video just looking at the 20 and I could have easily added more, loads more. So let's jump straight in. Like I say, I repeat, these aren't necessarily the best kits. They're just my most favorite builds over the years and they're in no particular order at all. They're just built, kits I've built. I'll say in the video some of them that are my favorites, uh, but they're in no particular order at all. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. So in no particular order, we start off with BMAX's 124 BMW E30 M3. And I have to say, this is by far one of my favorite car kits. I have built eight of these in different guises and still own about six or seven in the stash. Not only is quite a few boxings that have come out over the last few years, it was originally released in 2016, and they're still releasing new versions to date, this one being the newest, I think. There is loads of decal schemes out there, and aftermarket parts, engines, wheels, all sorts of stuff, and of course, different schemes. So it goes together really well. I built the Roffin scheme, this one had the wrong wheels on it. It had the um, center locking ones, which is fixed now. I built the rally version, out of the box. BMAX also offers the detailed upsets as well, which is a worthy addition to a lot of the kits because on the Bastos like this, it's not included in the original kit, only included with the detail upset. Um, tons of decal schemes, different wheels, the kit goes together, absolutely fantastic. Main issue on this is the bonnet doesn't quite line up, it sits skew with to one side. So the easiest way to fix that is just to drill out the mounting holes on the actual car body. That way you can move it over. And you might find it needs a stripper to a styrene just to lift it up a little bit as well to make it sit flush with the top of the body. But a wonderful kit of a wonderful car. Loads of decal schemes, loads of out-the-box schemes to do. And like I say, just a lovely build. And certainly one of my go-to kits to pick out the stash. But I just feel like a nice, easy build. It just goes together really, really well. And there's some phenomenal schemes out there from a multitude of different decal manufacturers. And some of these kits I will definitely revisit because uh, these were built quite a long time ago. And my skills, well, I think they've improved a bit. We could definitely improve on what we've got. But lovely kit. I highly recommend this kit to everybody. If you're into building cars and DTM or uh, rally cars, I will be doing one of these as a road going kind of track car, which I've done a few of lately of different kits. But I highly recommend this kit to anybody to go out there, pick up and build. Next up, another brand new kit from Tamiya. Uh, this came out literally in 2019. And while it's an underrated car because people say, oh, it's just a BMW, it's still a good looking car in my opinion. And I thoroughly enjoyed 
building this. Uh, I picked a perfect colour for it. First time using Gravity Clear Coat, if I remember right. And what a finish. Um, absolutely spectacular. And what a kit to build. Simple to build. Goes together completely flush free. Typical modern day Tamiya kit. And I think it's a really good looking car, personally. Um, I think it's quite underrated because it has that it's a BMW stigma about it. Uh, but I really enjoyed this and I would happily build another one at a later date. But again, I love building this and it came out really well first time. So am I going to improve on this? Probably not, but we can do it in a different colour. I'm sure there's other uh, aftermarket out there for it now. In fact, I might have seen a wide arch kit for it, if memory serves me right. Like I say, two-year-old Tamiya kit, what's not to like? Uh, I video built this on the channel, as I did with the B-Max uh, Jägermeister E30 as well. So you can go and check out a build of this on the channel. But probably, if I built it again, I'd add a detail upset to it. This is completely out of the box. I think a detail upset would add a little bit more depth uh, and detail to it. But like I say, highly recommend the kit. If you're looking for a nice, easy kit, fuss free, you can't go wrong with Tamiya kits. They're gonna, not really going to give you any hassle at all. And it's going to be an enjoyable experience from start to finish. Now this one. Very expensive kit that was a very, very kind gift from Brian Windmill. I've no idea why, but it was. This is Tamiya's 12 scale Caterham. This originally came out in 1994. So it's not a young kit at all. But wow, what a build this is. This literally builds up like a mini kit car. It's a phenomenal build. Great fun to do. Lots of options on the colour. You can leave it bare aluminium, and they are real aluminium panels on the kit. Uh, and that is bare, hasn't been painted or polished, just left how it is. Um, or you could paint the whole lot. It comes in a whole different selection of boxings in different variants, but this is what I went for. Toyed with the idea in the traditional green, I looked at blues and reds, and I finally settled on metallic black. And I'm really happy with the colour, but what a fantastic kit to build. Now, I built this out of the box, bar the seat belts, uh, and I added a bit of carpet, carpet trim to the interior as well. I wasn't too keen on the kit seat belts, so I added my own model factory Heroes. Uh, and added a little bit more carpet to the interior. But what a kit, out of the box, phenomenal. Loads of detail. You can see those belts look absolutely superb. And again, really enjoyed the build really highly detailed kit that you could do so much more to should you wish um but like i said i pretty much built it out of the box added a few toggle switches to the dash added the belts um but yeah wonderful kit expensive kit don't get me wrong we're up to 300 pounds uh unless you can get a cheap one somewhere but great great fun to build and again trouble free build process even though it's an older tamiya kit it goes together really, really well uh, and just looks great. Very impressive display case model um, and just lots of potential for adding detail. But even out the box, as you can see with the engine bay, we're about to see lots of detail in there. I'm sure there's more wiring you can add. You could change things. You could try and do an engine transplant, maybe a bike kit or something if you want to be absolutely crazy. But as an out-the-box build... Just absolutely lovely. From the k and filters to the carbs to the air horns. Just a just a lovely, lovely build all around. So, yeah, really enjoyed building this one. Sadly, it wasn't a video build. But I guess you never know. Sometime in the future, we might get another one. But highly recommended kit. Another one from Revel, highly recommended, is the fairly new uh, 68 Chevy Chevelle SS 396. So this is a 2019 new tool. Absolutely beautiful car, absolutely wonderful kit to build, and I chose this classic copper colour, and I thoroughly enjoyed building this. The pictures don't do that colour justice, really. It looks so much nicer under natural light. I know I had some video footage of it. If I can find it, I'll pop it in as well. But what a great kit. Revel New Tool. Went together with no issues whatsoever. Again, it's a video build on the channel. And I think this colour was the perfect colour for it. I've got another one in the stash to do. Which I fancy doing in red. So you may see another one done at a later date. But just all round a wonderful kit. Lovely colour. Bare metal foil on the trim. We left the kit chrome on all the chrome parts. Because it was pretty decent out of the box. So we left all that be. 
And like I say, again, if you're looking for a simple, cheap kit, you can pick these up for 20, 22 pounds. It's a highly recommended build. Um, lovely car, lovely kit. Great decals as well. The stripes over the bonnet were no issues. And uh, like I say, even the chrome work looked pretty decent. There's a few things that changed. I didn't wire the engine up on it. I don't know why, but I didn't back then. But I do plan on revisiting it. We're doing a different color. We'll have a little bit more detail to it and um, see what we can do second time round. But for the price for a new tool Rebel kit, very blurry picture there. I don't know what's going on with that one. Um, you can't fault it for the money. Now, from a cheap kit to an expensive kit, this is Fujimi's 12 scale Nissan Skyline R32. Expensive kit, big kit, and I had a lot of aftermarket to this. So it's about a £150 kit to buy, about £30 worth of aftermarket seatbelts in it. Uh, it costs me about £60 to paint alone. Um, I added some of the Studio Rosso. Detail upsets, the seats, the wheels, um, the brakes, and they added an immense amount of detail to the kit. And painting this beautiful blue color. This is an R35 color. I'm trying to think off the top of my head the color. And I completely forgot. I think it's azure blue, something like that. I forget what it is now. Uh, but a wonderful kit. A lot of work went into this. A lot of scratch building under the bonnet. Again, full video build on the channel. And it's a very impressive large kit. The Studio Rosso detail up bits add an immense amount to the kit. And I'd highly recommend it if you can get them. Sadly, they're no longer made. So that makes life a little bit difficult for it. But under the bonnet, we added a scratch build strut brace. Fluid reservoir for the brake master cylinder. Loads of wiring, some other bits and bobs under there that I added. Scratch a bit of wiper motor. We did a little brake lines, so on and so forth. The interior, we added the Takata belts um, with, uh, I think it was Model Factory Hero fittings, I think it was. And uh, added some carpet to be flocked at all. Added some homemade mats in there. And yeah, what a great, enjoyable build. And this thing is huge. It dominates my display case and all in. I reckon there's a good three, three, four hundred pounds worth in that thing. Uh, was it worth it? Yes. Very, very enjoyable build. Uh, I think out of the box it'd be a little bit underwhelming with all the added scratch building I did and all the lovely detail work um, I added. Um, that it makes a big difference to the kit. So onto the four GT. Uh, FYI as well, the R32 from Fujimi is a 1992 kit, opposed to this one, which is a 2019 Tamiya kit. Now, this was a wonderful kit to build. Sadly, I didn't video build it. I've got another one on the stash, and we will do it. I did it in Ford Trico Ruby Red, which is not the official colour for the car, but I'm so glad I picked it because it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. Again, of a wonderful new tool Tamiya kit that just came out absolutely spectacular. So, very happy with this build. That colour is absolutely stunning. Uh, what a great build, and what a great looking car as well. Um, thoroughly enjoyed this one. Typical modern day Tamiya kit. Again, it's going to give you no issues at all. A few people criticised me for not painting the tail lights because it should be red, but I quite like them clear. I always had something different to my model, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to pop them on clear. So I did, just for a different look, different touch. Um, so, Gravity Ruby Red, I masked and painted the gunmetal stripes over the top. And yeah, so happy with this one. The colour is absolutely stunning. And again, what another great kit from Tamiya. Another wonderful kit from Fujimi is their McLaren MP4. 12c you get this in a multitude of boxings but i bought this one and then bought the hobby design gulf decals for it which oh what a scheme absolutely beautiful great kit as well a little bit fiddly near the end to get the body to mate up to the front splitter so i had to use a bit of ca glue in the end to coerce it into position but what a wonderful wonderful kit to build i have the other gulf scheme for this which is the reverse of the colour. So it's blue body with orange stripes, I think I remember right. And the problem is this kit's getting hard to find now. I've still got two in the stash. 
Uh, if you can get one, I'd highly recommend getting it. Recommend getting it because these Fujimi kits are very, very underrated. This was a lovely build and what a phenomenal looking car. So this car was used in our advertising campaign for our decal solutions. You can actually find pictures of this and the Supra in Tamiya magazines in the back, uh, advertising our decal and polish. But wonderful kit. Again, highly recommend getting it. Not the cheapest. You get a little few extras in the box. I think you get a bit of P with this one. I think. I forget now. Um, but a few schemes out there. But this golf scheme just screamed at me to build it. And yeah, it looked absolutely spectacular. Wonderful kit. If you can get one, grab one. Now another kit, again, Fujimi. Underrated is an i11 GT3R. So this is available in the multitude of boxings as well. Uh, you get the Evangelion. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, boxing, which is a very cool scheme. Very hard to find. And the Good Smile one as well, which I'm lucky to have, thanks to my buddy Alan. Uh, Fujimi decals can be a little bit iffy, so take your time. But I did these with some aftermarket decals, and it came out really, really well. Beautiful kit to build, no issues whatsoever. Fell together, beautiful deep red color, nice clear coat, and yeah, just a great kit to build. There are very underrated kits these from Fujimi. Uh, they complain as kind of the I guess the homologated car, I guess you could say. And you can add your own schemes to them, should you wish. Um, but this turned out really nice. Really pretty screen. Scheme? Scream? Ah! So, decals should have been on the roof. The decal went a bit awry, so I ended up masking and painting the white stripes on the roof. The rest of it is decals, but the kit. Wonderful kit. I've got about another five or six of these in the stash. Um, so lots of plans for the future so we will definitely see a video build on the channel but nothing bad to say about this kit at all probably screams for a detail upset which i'm sure you could find and add and again another one the fujimi mercedes-benz sls amg gt3 wonderful kit again available on a multitude of schemes i use these decals from racing 43 and again wonderful kit a little bit of pee in this box, you get some of the grills and a few other bits and bobs. And again, just falls together. Lovely BMW, uh, Mercedes shape on this one, sorry. Um, and the scheme just came out lovely. Popped with that beautiful red colour. There's lovely decals as well, but no issues with the kit at all. Again, underrated kits that go together really, really well. And it just turns out a very impressive looking model so a few schemes out there i've got a few in my decal folders to do and again i've got about five or six of these in the stash including the pace car version which is a pretty cool version to do so again we'll see some video builds of these in the distant future but again highly recommended kit if you can grab one i would now whilst these may not be the best kits in the world they are some of my favoritest cars ever now the escort's not too bad we'll move on to another one we've got a little bit of a cheat here because it should be the top 20 it's kind of top 21 because i put two together as cosworths so these came in the boxings of the repsol the michelin pilot the mobile one and they were released um from let me see 1994 to 96 and then bell slash domino released this one in uh 2018 so I've made this in a multitude of schemes. I've done a couple of road-going track cars. So we've done this in the dual violet colour with the Oz rims. Lovely, lovely colour. And yeah, very happy how that one turned out. We added some aftermarket seats to it. I also did it in Ford Imperial Blue, which came out beautiful as well. Sadly, I've sold this one on. Kind of regret doing it, but sometimes you get made an offer you can't refuse. I've got a few more of these in the stash, thankfully. They do command silly money at the minute, uh, but mine aren't going anywhere, and I will build another one in Imperial Blue. And then there are lots of schemes out there for the kits, including this wonderful Bastos scheme. Again, I sadly no longer own this one. Um, again, offers you can't refuse, so they are sold on. Uh, but it goes together really well. Iconic escort shape. Rally interior, so you've got your bare minimum interior. This one's got optional speed line rims on it as well, as an added extra. And then this is the kit 
out of the box. This is the Tamiya offering. I did uh, this is the first version I did of this, and again, it goes together really well. Go be careful those blue decals; they can be a little bit troublesome. Um, but just take your time. Use good decal solutions, and you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. But again, iconic rally car. For me, the most iconic of them all is the Mitchell and Pilot version. Beautiful looking car. This just reminds me of being a kid, just being a teenager, watching these fly around forests and just amazing looking car. One of my favorite schemes of all time. And this is probably one of the rarer boxings of this kit. Luckily, I have one in the stash. I do want to revisit it because this one was built a long time ago and I know it could improve it. And then, like I say, there's other aftermarket schemes out there, including this Brady one, which I did in yellow. Um, so lots of different schemes out there you can do. And uh, it's your choice. I've got a good dozen schemes for the Escort. And you can even do the rear spoiler delete with the WRC wing, which is available on the resin aftermarket piece. Lovely kit. And the other one, my all-time favorite car, the Texaco Eggenberger Ford Sierra RS500. So, Tammy released these in 1980, let me see, was my cheat sheet? 89, and they did the Trampio one, which is a horrible boxing, but the same kit. Um, I built this originally out of the box, and I had some lacquer clear, absolutely eat the decals alive. So, luckily, SK Decals re-released the Texaco scheme, so I bought a new kit, did a new body, and stuck it on my existing chassis later on. Much, much happier with the scheme. And the overall finish came out great. And then SK also released the Labatt scheme, uh, which is a wonderful scheme driven by Tiff Nadell, if you remember old Tiff. And again, just a great kit. Now, the only downside to this kit is it's old. So it is showing a bit of lack in detail in places. And the roll cage isn't complete in the kit. I have scratch built all mine with the missing bits going by pictures. And I had to do it. Moonstone blue is my favorite color in the RS uh, Sierras. Um, so I made one as a track road car. Stuck them on some of the optional 17-inch BBS rims that were offered on the original cars. And yeah, beautiful. Again, sadly, I no longer own it. But I have more of these in the stash. And I will revisit this one and keep it for myself. Love Moonstone blue. and absolutely love that car. Absolutely wonderful car. Now, bikes. So this is Tamiya's Honda RC211. These are the 03. So you've got the Telefonica Movie Star. We've got my favourite, the Repsol Honda. So these were all released in 2003-2004. We've got the Valencia Rossi bike, which I've just acquired. So maybe we'll see a build of that at some point. And then the BIG, which is really the Camel bike, uh, just without its tobacco logo on so they were made in 2003-2004 and then the 06 version the Repsol Danny Pedrosa bike was brought out in 07 and then subsequently they brought out the uh, LCR Honda and the Kanika Minolta Honda later on so I've put a lot of bike kits over the years the Honda 03 and 06 RC211 is my favorite of them all and I built a few uh, this is the first one I built, the Kanika Minolta. So basically kind of out the box. I added some carbon decals to it, went to town on the carbon, and just painted it up um, as it went. And as a first kind of proper MotoGP bike, it came out okay. So like I say, mostly out of the box, kit chain, everything. It shows you what can be done with a little bit of dry brushing and a wash. Um, it came out really well. And this, this kit now commands... Silly, silly money, and I paid twenty pounds for this about ten. No, not even ten years ago. About seven years ago, I got a bargain for it. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the build, and I just love these Hondas. I think they are very pretty bikes, and they are very, very enjoyable uh, builds as well. Quite straightforward. You can add lots and lots of detail should you wish. Um, loads of aftermarket was out there for them. It's getting harder to find now. Um, but they are a lovely, lovely bike to build. So, like I say, this is the 06, they do the 03. Very subtle differences in them. And even some of the 03 and 06s vary uh, slightly. Some have got longer screen fairings. 
there's a few different exhausts, a few different parts. So be careful when you buy them. If you do buy them, make sure you check your box in for the sprues to make sure you've got all the correct sprues. But thoroughly enjoyed this build um, and all the others are done. So sit back as you're going to see uh, a few of these appearing now because I've built quite a lot of these over the years. I think I've done three of the RC211s. This is by far my favourite one and probably one of my best models I've ever built to date. So this is the 03 now, Repsol 211 Honda. And I absolutely loved building this. Uh, so we added a little bit of detail in places, not a huge amount. We carboned up again. We've had a little bit of wiring, I think, here and there, um, but nothing to OTT. This boxing is the only one that comes with a little bit of PE and a clutch cover as well. So it does come with a little bit of detail uh, in there, but by far my favorite scheme. Uh, and we all say we don't have perfect models. For me, this is as near perfect as it gets. Um, there's one or two flaws on it, minute flaws, but this to me is near perfection to my eye of um, what I wanted to do. There's a few things that change. Uh, a few aftermarket bits I'd add, like we get rid of those wheel screws and add the proper hex nuts. Um, but overall, as a build, this thing went together great. And it's such a beautiful, iconic, not only Moto GP bike, but Rossi bike as well. For me, this is the bike I remember Rossi riding. And it was an enjoyable build and wonderful. I got some pictures of it where it's fairings on as well to show some of the detail underneath. And like I say, this is pretty much out of the box. In fact, looking at it, I don't think I added any wire into this one whatsoever. Um, it did come out really well, though. Very, very happy with it. The carbon work alone, there's hours and hours of work in that. Um, use various shades of metallics and what have you. But yeah, overall, lovely build of a great kit and an iconic bike. Now, sadly, as with a lot of these bike kits, they are becoming harder and harder to find. Uh, and they are commanding silly money. These kits would have been between 20 and 30 pounds originally. They're now fetching upwards of 100, 150 quite easily. And they are getting harder and harder to find. So if you can get one and you want to build one, I would. Um, but yeah, these are a kit to also not stash or collect, but definitely one to build. Really enjoyable build and one of my favorite bikes. So, on to another. This is the Tamiya RC211-06. This is the LCR bike. Um, we video built this one. Uh, what a fantastic scheme this one is. Um, pretty much out of the box, I think, by the carbon again. Uh, we had a fork set. I think all the bikes got fork sets on them. Um, I think I added a clutch set to this one. To be honest, I've completely forgotten what I added to this. Um... I think it's pretty much just the basic stuff. But wonderful kit to build. Beautiful scheme as well. Another of the iconic Hondas um, went together great. Now, the great thing about most of these Tamiya kits is the bike kits. Most of them come with cartograph decals. I think it's all of the Telefinica one. Um, so the decals don't tend to give you a lot of grief. They go down great. They're very vibrant. And ju just look at the colors on that bike. It's absolutely stunning. Um, you can watch the video build of this. I think it's about 12, 11, 12, 13 parts long on the channel. And just a great, iconic bike, this one. Love your livery. And again, we just had some subtle exhaust stain in. We've added some carbon decal to it as well. Um, and they just go together so well. Uh, you can build them in sub-assemblies, uh, the way they build up, uh, do all the bodywork, the frame, the engine rear swing arm and all the different components front forks can all be built up but they are great fun to build uh the problem is i came to a kind of a stalemate with them where they were starting to annoy me because i was being too over critical of what i was doing uh and it kind of ruined the builds a little bit for me i end up selling all of my bikes now i bought a few back so hopefully we can get back into them maybe get some builds on the channel but these are great fun to build and this is just, well, it's one of my favourite bikes. The Ripsa Honda's up there is my favourite. I think this one's up there, a second favourite. Again, I got some pictures of it naked. And uh, you can see that wonderful, crazy exhaust system. 
um, and just all the carbon work we've added and some of the staining to the exhaust and what have you. Uh, you can see that clutch plate, absolutely lovely. And yeah, great fun to build these. I really do. I enjoy all the bikes I've built over the years. I've built quite a lot over the years, all different types. But the Hondas have always been the one that are called to me more. And these are the ones I tended to uh, always want and have built. So great kit to build, great fun. If you can get them, they are hard to find, but it's highly recommended. Now, a 2017 six scale Honda CRF1000L Africa Twin. The day I saw this kit announced, I thought I have to buy that kit. So I bought the kit, the aftermarket chain set for it, and set to work. And what a wonderful build this was. What a stunning, impressive looking, big scale model this is. So the front and rear suspension works, the forks work, uh, the chain fully works as well. If you buy the aftermarket chain, um, it's all in separate links. Expensive kit, you're looking at up to £200 ish if you buy it new. Uh, with the chain set, but lovely kit and one I'd definitely like to revisit at a later date. And in fact, I kind of cut. I had a bit of an accident with some of the body panels when 2K and two of them fell together and stuck themselves together and ruined the decals. I can't really see it in the pictures, but I bought a whole new body set and decal set, and I do fancy redoing it, revisiting it, and spraying it red. So we may see this on the channel as kind of a update build. Um, for sure. Also, wish I'd added a little bit more detail to the engine, like washes and what have you. But again, maybe a kit we'll revisit at a later date uh, and see how we get on. But great fun to build. A very imposing, very large scale model that looks great in the display case. One of the first large scale jets I bought years and years ago. I think I built this in 2014. I paid about £65 for it off eBay. It's an absolute bargain. It's Tamiya's 132 F16. Wonderful, wonderful kit. A lot of work in this kit. I think I spent two weeks alone building, painting, and decaling the audience. audience. And, yeah, what a wonderful model. This, for many years, was Tamiya's flagship 132 kit, and I can well and truly see why. Um, all the... Vulcan gun port opens, you can swap all the weapons around, change the loadout, uh, the engine slots out the back, you can display it on a little stand, um, the nose opens to show the nose mounted radar, and it's just a great kit. Great fun to build, bit of a challenge to paint. This model actually wrecked my original Pache compressor, it overheated it because of the sheer size of two in it. So very subtle weathering on it as well, but what a great build. Um, sadly, long sold, lives in somebody else's collection now, but great fun to build and a nice highly detailed model out the box. I couldn't think of a single thing you could add to this. I'm sure there is, but what a great fun large scale build. Now, one of the best for me 132 builds I've ever done is a special hobby Mark Fried Tempest. Now, it's a pig of a kit. Don't get me wrong, it is a nightmare to build because the fit isn't great. It takes a lot of attention and work on all the seams and what have you to build. I spent two weeks just on one scene where the front cowling meets the main fuselage. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of work, but I was very proud of this. And what a stunning aircraft and very formidable the aircraft the tempest is i've got several pictures of this from over the years uh, because i was never quite happy with some of the pictures i took but lightly weathered we've got the id stripes on it uh we've had some chip in here and there and just some light weather and like i said taking pictures of it under different lights uh and it didn't quite show on white so i did it on black but great build definitely not one for a beginner this took a lot of modeling skill and work but I was very happy with the result, uh, and this took pride of place in my display case for many, many years. This was released in 2016, the F-16 before, I mean, say it was 2004. So it's a fairly new kit, but Special Hobby are short-run kits, so they're not the best fitting kit, and it does take a lot of work to build this to a good standard. So if you're a competent modeler, 
knock yourself out. Uh, if you really fancy a challenge, give it a go. But it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. I've doubled up a picture there by accident. But very proud of this one. And sadly, again, I sold it on not that long ago to a very happy uh, owner who bought it off me. Um, but wonderful build, wonderful kit, and what a fantastic looking aircraft as well. So I was looking for a 132 kit, quick easy build to do a while back. And my good buddy Norman Dedison recommended any of the Hasegawa Japanese 132 aircraft. I pick up this Raiden, fairly cheap off eBay, built it. This thing fell together. Literally, well, the easiest kits I've built, everything lined up well. Um, just really quick, simple, nice, easy to build kit, and it came out quite well. So I'm not a big fan of overweathering my aircraft. I just like to do subtle weathering here and there. So we normally do like a pin wash, some staining, modulation effects, uh, highlights with the airbrush and what have you. Uh, but very happy with this build. Like I say, for a quick out-the-box build, I think all I added to this was some paper seat belts uh, we sell at UMP to it. But it came out absolutely fantastic. I was more than happy with this. For an out-of-the-box kit, it just went together really well. A lot of these 132 Hasegawa kits are really good kits to build, really good fun, and good for anyone, really. Any skill set should be able to build one of these. Um, I really enjoyed this one. This is probably the last aircraft I truly completed, because after this, I stopped building them. Just kind of lost interest. But again, we've got the F-51 on the go at the minute, so hopefully that will change. But well, check out the Hasegar 132s. One of the older zeros you need to be careful of, but the rest of them are good. Now, a kit. A lot of people have been warned against or told it wasn't great. Is Airfix's 2013 for the of scale Javelin. Now, I came into this thinking, hmm, okay, we're going to have trouble with this. That front engine nacelle the there is a little bit tricky to fit. You need a little bit of careful gluing sanding and prescribing the rest of the kit fell together with ease it's a beautiful kit to build of a truly iconic british aircraft very very impressive delta wing and uh, yeah again i thoroughly enjoyed this build uh kit decals no bother at all they went on great and um, yeah light weathering again nothing too extreme and again just a really enjoyable kit so this went into production in 2013 um airfix and their usual standard stop producing it no idea why they do that and then they re-released it in 2018 i think it was um uh, so if you can grab one and you fancy building something as iconic as this aircraft i would highly recommend this one great kit to build great fun and a very very impressive looking aircraft once done you've got that lovely two-tone british uh camo scheme on top and then the high speed silver underneath which when weathered up a bit looks absolutely fantastic as well on to armor we've got rifle models 2020 uh challenger 2 tes so a video build i did um and what a great kit it's got a few little fit issues here and there uh but overall it went together really really well quite a tricky build quite a lot of little fiddly bits to do on it um but overall went together great Great looking tank, really impressive looking piece of armor. Uh, I painted it slightly too light a color, as a lot of few people pointed out. But at the end of the day, it's my model. Um, I built it as I perceived. Um, we weathered it up every river nightmare with the weathering set on it. I had to quickly delete that. But with some oil pin washers, a bit of UMP um, clay based washers. Uh, airbrushed on, dusted off, and then some mud effects airbrushed on the side with UMP washes again and flicked on. Gave it a nice weathered look. So great kit. Highly recommend this one. We have to a piece of very impressive British armour. This one's worth a look. And just look at the stance and width of that thing. Very, very impressive. So from a new tool armour to an old tool academy kit. So this is a 1997 um academy m18 hellcat now, i bought this cheap and i was pleasantly surprised how good this kit was now what lets this kit down is the tracks they're atrocious so i added some frul tracks which you can actually see me using our burnishing fluid on in our burnish fluid video on youtube there are the tracks off this kit 
So I added some Alpine figures. I think I added some stowage. I think it was some Black Dog. Um, and we weathered it up, put the floor tracks on. And I think it made a pretty impressive looking piece of armor. Uh, it's a fairly cheap kit to buy. I think you can still get it. I really enjoy building it. Are there better Hellcats out there? I don't know. But this was a good kit. And it just goes to show even older kits can still hold their own in this day. Uh, even for the likes of Academy, they're not Tamiya. Um, they're not Ryanfield models, but I had as much fun with this kit as I did with that Challenger. And yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. And the overall effect was pretty good. Built this a long time ago. This was probably built in about 2014. Um, but still a great build that sticks in my memory to this day. And again, some salt weather on it. Nothing too OTT, some nice streaking, some rust spots. Uh, and that's it. On to sci-fi. So, one of my favourite pieces of sci-fi, not only do I love Star Wars, I love the Y-Wings. So, in 2015, Bandai went and released a whole host of their clip-together kits. Uh, I love the Y-Wings, so I went out and bought this, and I completely painted and weathered the entire thing. So, lovely model to build, very much fun to uh, weather up as well. So we base painted it in various colours and then brush painted some colours in there for all the pipe work and what have you. Then we've added some chipping, some blaster marks and then smothered it all in a nice UMP dark dirt wash. And wiped up all the excess and we're left with a nice battle warm piece of sci-fi armour. Yeah, armour, aircraft, spaceship. So this is kind of armour, isn't it? Armour slash aircraft. Uh, great fun to build, and you really can't fault these Bandai kits. Then I also bought the ATST, another one of my favourite vehicles from Star Wars, 48 scale, and I kit bashed it with one of Tamiya's 48 scale Stugs. So I had a little vision in mind of what to do. Now, most of the parts you can see in tan are the 48 scale uh, Tamiya kits. Bits. There's a few other, other tanky bits on there as well, uh, like the fuel tanks, a few of the greeblies are popped on. And my idea was to kitbash this into a German what-if piece of armour. So we added some Balkan Cruise uh, markings on the side, stuck a 48 scale figure on the top, MG43, uh, sorry, 42 on top, and painted it in German grey. Weathered it up, and I thought it came out quite well. It almost looks like something that could have been around in the Second World War in a futuristic kind of way. Uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed building it. Definitely a different take. Amazing how well all those parts actually kitbashed onto that. It came out really, really well. And uh, that was great fun to build. So there we go. That's my top 20 kits I've built over the years. There we go. My top 21 builds. Uh, <laughs> there's so many I've left out there that should be in there. Tamiya's Subarus. Uh, Tamiya's uh, Skyline, so 32, 33, 34, all great kits. It should be in there, just around our room. Tamiya's Peugeot 2 is 6s. The Tamiya list could be as long as my arm. It really could, because um, they do so many kits. But there's so many other kits off there for manufacturers that could be included as well. Um, but the list would be endless. So I've done my top 21 kit so i may do one of my top 10 worst ones because i've built some stinkers over the years as well i try to avoid them now um but i'll see what kind of a list i can compose of my top 10 worst and i'm also thinking of doing my top 10 subjects so we covered some in this today but there's some in there that aren't as well so not just not necessarily the best kits but cars or aircraft that i particularly like uh, and either have tried to or would like to build um, in the past, in the future. Uh, I may do that as well. So we'll see what you think of this one. It's a long video, and I hope you stuck with it and listened to the reasons why I liked the kits and why I didn't, uh, why I didn't like, things like that. Um, but I'd highly recommend any of those. Um, some to beginners, some to more competent builders. Obviously, if you're new to bikes, maybe buying that Siskale Africa Twin. Wouldn't be the best choice, uh, but it certainly build up well because they go together really, really well. I'm not a fan of this build buy cheap kits to test your skills on because I think that can give you a negative effect. If the kit doesn't go together well, you'll think, oh, sod this. This is no fun. Whereas if you build a kit that goes together well, 
you're going to enjoy that more. So I think it's a vicious circle, that one of what to buy and when. For me, I just buy the subject you enjoy, do a bit of research, check out who makes the best kit of it and go from there. Um, but I've got lots of kits in the stash. Um, so these are my favorite ones that I built to date. So hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. If you have any thoughts on the other videos, my top 10 worst, are my top 10 favorite subjects as well. We can also do it at a later date. Um, and yeah, there we go. If you want to support future videos, my Patreon link is in the description down below. And my PayPal me link is there as well. Any support is greatly appreciated by you all. And for those that have supported so far, thank you very much. You're all absolute stars and legends. Um, and of course, check out Intastic Scale Model Facebook page and forum. UMPRetail.com. We can get quite a few of these kits here. We sell them. Um, check out the Live the Bench page and the Offer Hangout group um, for all the live show news and Offer Hangouts. And my poor ISM page as well, where my personal model and work is shared. And make sure you sub to the channel, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, click the bell notifications, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every single comment. And if you made it this far in the video, leave in the comments down below purple dishwasher monkey towel. Let's see who puts that in the chat down below. Let's see who got this far in the video and stuck with it. Because I reckon a lot of people switch off as soon as I go and check out the Scale Model Facebook page and follow them because they've heard it all before. So let's see who stuck around to the end. So thank you very much for watching today. I'll catch you all next time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.